quantum mechanics is often thought of as the science of the very, very small. This year's Nobel Prize physics winners have won for making things big. Or bigger, anyway. So this is all about quantum tunneling, which is when kind of the impossible happens in physics. So classically, you might imagine that you throw a ball, it hits a wall and it bounces back at you. Well, quantum physics is all about probabilities. And actually, quantum mechanics tells us that there is a small but not zero chance that that ball goes straight through the wall and exists on the other side. And although this sounds bizarre, it's actually at the heart of things like radioactive decay and photosynthesis, but actually seeing it at such a grand kind of macroscopic scale was very difficult. And let's name the winners of this year's physics prize then. They are John Clark, Michelle Devereux and John Martinez. And they've worked together really for quite a long time. That's right. So they did this work in the 1980s at the University of California, Berkeley. And they were exploring trying to get quantum tunneling to happen on a macroscopic scale in tiny electrical circuits. We're talking about kind of millimetre sized circuits. These are superconducting, which means that they have current flowing with zero resistance. And they go from this state where they're kind of trapped in this one state. And then they showed that if they could slowly ramp up the current, they could get the system to transition to quantum tunnel into a different state. And they saw that by a very characteristic spike in voltage. And they were, they were only able to do it because they were able to control all of the interference and noise around. And it took really, really careful control of the experiment to do it. But of course, this was quite a long time ago. What could this be used for now? Well, macroscopic quantum systems are exactly what are at the heart of quantum computers, right? A quantum computer is this kind of machine where you store information in, a, in two states at once, and that potentially could make us able to do calculations that would just be impossible on a classical computer. But doing that means having quantum systems that you can actually manipulate, that you can control. And that's exactly what these guys did. And it is the 100th birthday of quantum mechanics this year. Are these fitting winners, do you think? Absolutely, I think so. To be honest, I think that they're almost the missing link between Schrodinger and Bohr and all these pioneers of the 1920s and the future that we're looking to where we're making use of all of these bizarre predictions of quantum mechanics.